Absolutely. So we're joined live again via Skype with Dr. Dana Hawkinson with University of Kansas Health System. Doctor, we're always glad to have you on in the mornings to talk about these topics, get real yeah. answers for people. Let's start with the basics on this because this has changed and it's still causing some arguments on people about why I need to wear one or why I don't need to wear one. Why is it important right yeah. now? Why has this changed to wear a mask? Yeah, it, it's changed a little bit, but it's still been consistent with what we've been saying from the onset. You know, certainly in the hospital, our providers need to wear PPE that's appropriate, and this includes medical grade masks. Um, these cloth masks are not medical grade masks. What the thinking is behind it is that certainly we know for the first SARS epidemic um, that we did not see here really in this country, that you can start shedding virus 24 to 36 hours after becoming symptomatic. Unfortunately, with this virus, SARS-2 or COVID, um, we, you can spread the virus when you are asymptomatic or you have no symptoms or before you get symptoms, maybe 24 or 48 hours beforehand. So these cloth masks now for the general population basically is to help protect other people if you are asymptomatic. So putting those on helps protect you from spreading it to other people. Um, they're not as uh, protection as, as with medical grade masks that we wear in the hospital. But it should be noted too that even when wearing these masks, we don't want you to get a false sense of security. So it's very important to continue to use hand hygiene and not manipulate your mask because when you start manipulating your mask frequently, you contaminate the mask and, and obviously run the risk of contaminating uh, your face with the virus as well. But doctor, there are a lot of different kinds of masks that you can see online that you could make for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you were going to make one from something at your house, from a doctor's perspective to stop that spread as much as you could, what would you make a mask out of? Yeah, I think the most simple recommendations, even from the CDC, are just simple cloth masks. So something like a bandana, maybe a scarf, things of that nature. Um, I could maybe put my 11-year-old daughter on it to, as a project to make a mask. Um, again, we really want some sort of physical barrier, and this cloth will, will offer that barrier. I know there are people who are inserting filters from the, the AC unit or filters from a uh, vacuum cleaner into these masks. The goal really is to block a lot of these large droplets that can be expelled when you're coughing, sneezing, sometimes even talking as well. And so I think even in a bandana, a simple bandana has been um, recommended as well. How do we clean them, Dr. Hawkins? Because it's not to keep you from getting sick. Exactly. If, if, if someone's making their own and they're making it out of a, mm -hmm. a rag or a scarf or something like that, it's, this is going to be a multi-use mask on more than one occasion. So how do we clean this properly so we can continue to use it whenever we go out? Yeah, luckily this virus is pretty susceptible to household cleaners and soap and water. Soap and water remains the best thing. So we certainly recommend frequent um, laundering of the mask, you know, with your with your clothes. If you can wash it at least once a day or have a couple that you wear and then put in the dirty clothes and then uh, and then wash them in the washing machine, that should be more than adequate for cleaning the masks. Something a lot of people are concerned about right now, Dr. Hawkins, and they want to be able to do this correctly, do it safely, protect mm -hmm. themselves, protect their family, and protect people around them. Thank you again so much for joining us this yeah. morning.